Arsenal monitoring Douglas Lewis. Fabrizio Romano is the man behind this story as he obviously appears onto the court offside Starbucks and obviously what we call the podcast that obviously runs I think two or twice or thrice a week onto that website. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. This is the Football News Show. We are talking Neymar. We all know to it that he obviously went ahead to walk off the fi- pitch with a very bad injury and he has gone ahead and obviously spoken about the injury has gone ahead obviously gate and what it means for his career it is the end of career for neymar we are going to be diving deep into that and lastly we are going to talk about rodri coming in and giving his manager at man city the flowers that he deserves that is pep guardiola and how he obviously <coughs> supersedes all managers in the world when it comes to club football so good afternoon it's a thursday and today you know very well that i'm going to bring you the match preview of chelsea versus arsenal i think i'll do something concerning man city and bright or not so because you guys are really eagerly waiting for it um liverpool I think I should do a live video today as I talk about Man City, Brighton, Liverpool and um, Liverpool and um, Liverpool and uh, what's the other team? It's Liverpool and uh, Everton. Yeah, I think it will be a very good conversation in between me and you live onto this channel. So. We thank God for the gift of life. For the Muslims, Barak Laufikum, and let's obviously take it where we deserve to be by really bringing you the latest news information as far as this is concerned. Fabrizio Romano had the following to say about Douglas Luiz as he was talking to the court offside. He said, Arsenal, are always, keep, Arsenal always keep monitoring Douglas Luiz. Arsenal always keep monitoring Douglas Luiz. Remains of them. He is always been appreciated. Of course, we know that Arsenal had bids rejected for Douglas Lewis in September 2022 and he later went on to sign a new contract at Villa which runs until 2026. This is a story coming in from Court Offside. Now, for Douglas Lewis, I think he's a good player. I've seen him play. He has a very good... <coughs> A very good set set of skill with him, press resistant, and he does a lot in the midfield. At the age of 25, that is Douglas Luiz, and he is really doing lots of things for himself at the club of Aston Villa. He's obviously one of the best players that have gone here to thrive under the management of Unai Emery. And he's obviously doing wonders at that side. But to bring you back or to bring you up to speed. He's one of those players that Mikel Ateta saw at Manchester City, you know, and they later loaned him and later sold him out. So, we look at Douglas Luiz. <coughs> I think if you're looking for a player to play next to Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard, he really fits the profile. That is it. He really fits the profile and he's really one of those players that will always and always and always get Arsenal to where they deserve to be. And... Um, You'd obviously want a player like him in the midfield. And in the scenario where Arsenal is said to lose Jorginho to Barcelona in the summer transfer window of 2025 and Thomas Partey's Thomas tenure at Arsenal being questioned with the set of injuries in, increasing, yet he's obviously into his third decade of his age. It obviously makes us think that maybe Arsenal will go in for another player like Douglas Lewis. And look at Douglas Lewis this season. He has gone ahead to obviously improve and really become a better player. He has gone ahead to play eight Premier League games and he has three goals. And he's a midfielder. You know, when you look at that start, what does it remind about you? The player that Arsenal has always been missing. And he has gone ahead to leave the club of Arsenal the recent summer and is playing for Borussia. Sorry, he's playing for Bayern Leverkusen. <laughs> that is Granite Xhaka. <clears throat> Xhaka was scoring goals in that position. That is the number eight position. And he obviously found himself in a position of assisting and obviously putting in his body on the line. And um, he obviously won Arsenal lots of games. So 
if you're really looking for a perfect replacement of Granit Xhaka, I think Douglas Lewis fits the profile very, very well. The stats of him never lie, and he is just 25 years of age. And at 25, a player is at his prime. Now, the Brazilian mentality at Arsenal, especially brought in by the sporting director of Arsenal, that is Edu Gaspar, plus Ateta, having worked with Douglas Luiz when he was at Man City, are the two factors, if well combined, really gives the permutation of him <clears throat> as one of the players that Arsenal are still monitoring. You know, it doesn't mean that he's the, he's the midfielder that Arsenal are going to sign in the summer, but there are lots of midfielders that Arsenal are really eyeing. There is one in Flamenze, and I've told you that um, in this uh, <clears throat> international break, Edu has been in, has been at Brazil. He has been in Brazil. He has talked to Flam. He has visited Flamengo, Corinthians, Sao Paulo, Atlético Paranaense, close to six, seven teams that play into the top tier league of this team of um, <clears throat> of this league of Brazil. So it shows you that he's there to obviously establish himself, and he knows exactly what Brazil harbors for the talent and the football across the world you see even in my country uganda we're having brazilians so brazilians have gonna hate to play football on every continent here africa asia uh, south america north america europe austria and any continent. they've gonna hate obviously put themselves into that ilk of kicking a ball everywhere so that is it for douglas Luiz, but he'll be a perfect addition to that side of arsenal because if it happens it's obviously going to be great. And you see to it that he's putting up numbers. In eight games, has three goals. So how is he going to look at the end of the season? Because he might put up a tally of close to 20 goals. Because the midfield of Aston Villa and how it plays with him obviously gives him allowance to really... It gives him allowance to obviously thrive in the final third of the opponent. Now... When you look at how things have been going and how he lines up in this Villa side, he has <clears throat> Kamara, Meguin, and uh, Cash. You know, so he's having Meguin and Kamara playing behind him. So that offers him to obviously thrive, and that's why you sort of it that I brought your story last time when um. When this guy, that is Yudi Tidemans, is really complaining of lack of enough playing time, that is obviously going to leave. And you, sort of, you see to it that sometimes he's being played in the double pivot alongside Boba Kamara as Moussa Diaby plays ahead of him. Zaniolo is another one playing ahead of them. So he's playing in the midfield that obviously offers him a lot of time to go ahead because Kamara can obviously play a single pivot very well and he can thrive onto it and obviously take him to where he deserves to be so that's all about douglas Luiz. i think he ticks all the boxes of what michaela teta wants in a number eight at arsenal and beauty of him is he can also play as a central attack sorry a central defensive midfielder in a single pivot at arsenal so arsenal fans dream about it and it might happen Maybe next season you might be having a midfield three of Declan Rice, Martin Odegaard, and Douglas Luiz as the experiment of Kai Havertz has not gone ahead to work out in the number eight position. But each and every time Kai Havertz is played in further positions of the pitch, he comes through and thrives and obviously takes Mikel Ateta off the pressure from the fans like he did against Man City. You saw him put up that assist for the player known as Martinelli Gabriel. So that is all about Douglas Luiz. We wait and see if Arsenal really continue really spying on him. But other midfielders that Arsenal are really skying or really scouting and keeping an eye on. There is um uh this guy of Rio Sociedad. What's his name? Um Rio Sociedad. Let me get his name clear. Rio. Rio Sociedad, the Spanish guy. That Spanish guy that plays in their midfield. Let me get his name here. That Arsenal is obviously monitoring. Zubimendi. So Zubimendi is one of those that Arsenal is monitoring. Uh, Zubim, there is um, 
there is uh sofian fofana yeah he plays for a certain team in france and he's also part of the french national team um which of them if it has been linked to arsenal in the past days yo because it looks like a lot is being said about this midfield of arsenal so let's wait and see where arsenal is going to point but i really believe that they're going to go in for good 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 players that i'm gonna hate to be proven into the league now let's talk about neymar neymar was injured <coughs> as brazil lost to nil to uruguay he left the pitch crying after getting the new injury and he was crying off on the stretcher with his hands on his face that is how the man looked neymar but we all knew it was really a very 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 serious injury that is neymar and today has gone ahead and obviously put out a statement that we have obviously to present you here onto the rokani media to get to know what neymar is obviously talking about he has said it's very sad moment the worst of my life i know i'm strong but this time i need support of my family and my friends it's not easy to get injured undergo surgery and then do it again just four months later i have faith i leave it in god's hands now neymar to me he's one of the biggest regrets in football he is really one of the best talents that we've ever seen the last decade but the problem is he's an inconsistent player that obviously hasn't really put up to where he expects to be and um maybe it's because of the money he was at barcelona and trust me brazil was pushing brazilians were pushing that all what messi is doing it's because of neymar and neymar should leave and obviously become an independent man and when he became independent at psg he failed to win a champions league that would have gone ahead to put him in the queue of ballon d'Or winners that is neymar and finally, I was going to have to leave PSG, and he's now playing for is it uh, Al Tihad in, I think Al Hilal in Saudi Arabia. But one thing you'll never question about him is his talent. Talent-wise, he's really ticked. But the problem has always been his lifestyle, and this is even into the modern game that every player who doesn't rest enough and obviously obey what the nutrition doctor tell him to eat and not to eat he'll keep getting these injuries when you look at ronaldo and messi they've managed to play up to this level without getting serious injuries in their game because of how they've gone ahead to really thrive and obviously get themselves where they deserve to be so i think neymar is the orchestrator of his bad injuries he doesn't rest enough you know a player who obviously misses out onto a match for his game because he has to attend the birthday of his sister in brazil as if it cannot be celebrated either in spain all around europe where he can easily be there and attend and get some rest shows you how unserious the player is but he has gotten the money but we who really saw a lot come in him are really disappointed but wish him a quick recovery and it's high time he really discovered that he needs to rest enough if he doesn't rest he might even get what we call a career ending injury that is it coming in from neymar now let's talk about rodri and what he had to say about pep guardiola rodri has gone ahead and said <clears throat> pep guardiola is the most influential coach of my career he's elevated me to a level i didn't know i could reach when you get used to him i say why don't they do this i see everything much easier he gives you a toolbox and you have more tools than the rest. That is Rodri and what he's talking about um, uh, Pep Guardiola. Now, players like Rodri are really blessed. You know, when Pep Guardiola was playing for Barcelona, he played as a CDM. And he's obviously trying to coach Rodri. And Rodri has to benefit a lot because if... Pep Guardiola is going to hate to improve forwards, defenders, and so on and so forth. 
courtesy of his coaching staff how is he not to go ahead and obviously improve improve a cdm a position that he really played in so that is pep guardiola for you and i think he's really influential not only in the life and in the career of rodri but in the careers of many at man city when you look at how he's really molding julian alves you obviously get a good picture of what this man is about when it comes to really turning players into what we least expect them to be even Eding Haaland, you know, <clears throat> he's trying to obviously let him know that you now need to be part of the flow of the game. You shouldn't be there in the final third of the pitch waiting for the ball to come for you. You should involve yourself in the build-up play for the team of City such that we benefit a lot. And that is what he's carrying right about now. So for me, Rodri coming out and saying that Pep Guardiola is really influential, that's no news to me. We've seen him transform very many teams, you know. At Barcelona, you saw to it that he got players from the academy, you know. Lionel Messi, you know. Mm, Pedro. Uh, Busquets. And it looks like he has something great when it comes to players that play in the midfield. Remember, Barcelona had uh, the Thiago Motors um in that midfield and when they left he obviously brought in Sergio Busquets who was really seen as a defender but he transformed him into a CDM because he was not fast and he was not really strong but he was good on the ball so what he did was he told him I'm obviously going to initiate you into the CDM role of Barcelona and the rest is history. So, the Tiagal Cantaras, I'm going to have to benefit a lot from him. The Joshua Kimmich at Bayern Munich, I'm going to have to benefit from him. And at Man City, Yaya Toure, though they fell out badly. There is this other guy. What's his name? Fernandinho, who has also going to hate obvious drive. Ika Gundogan, Bernardo Silva. And you look at Man City, the best transformed players are in that midfield. Because they are really, really having a manager who knows what to do. In the exact period of time so guys your thoughts on to arsenal monitoring douglas louise i welcome in the comment section below what do you make about neymar's outcry after sustaining an injury as brazil lost to need to uruguay and lastly pep guardiola being given his flowers by rodri i sign up for now see you letters i cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ and for the muslims barak lauthikum i'm out Bye-bye.